don't like, Vada Fly gonna recap this and say Gotti caught a 30 on the John Road. So all y'all wanna know what happened, I'm gonna tell you what happened. He got smoked. That was crazy, y'all the game. Time has Peter, nobody that knows body. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the Vada Fly. We used to rapping like that. Let's just get started, let's just get started. <laughs> You already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers, that notification gang, ricegangclothing.com for the merchandise. You heard me right. Salute to my guy, Showtime SP. I'm gonna I'm gonna break down this whole hitman situation after the battle, his reaction, his interview that went on um yesterday with Mr. Check the Temperature. Check, watch his interview with Hitman where they go, they talking about the bars, they talking about the battle, they talking about the situation. Hitman also answered why he doesn't why he didn't do no interviews and things like that. Um I, I want to talk about a couple things, you know what I'm saying? So there's some there's some key things that we need to point out. And salute to Mr. Check Temperature. If you haven't seen, he's a newer blogger. He's the one that got the interview with Hitman Holler. He is from St. Louis. I did talk about him on this channel before and I think his content is pretty dope. He's an up and coming guy, you know what I'm saying? And the thing about it is to pay it forward. You know, once you start succeeding and things like that, it's always good to pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? Him, guys like Battle Rap Fiend and other folks who are definitely doing um, good things in the battle rap culture. But yo, let me, let me break this down, right? So, Hitman said he didn't do any interviews with like the 15 minutes of fame and hip hop is real I think he mentioned um 15 Mr. Check the Temperature mentioned Piper Boy Williams too and things like that he, and he he said he doesn't he didn't do interviews with any of them because he feels like they have agendas and things like that but I've never seen Uncle Ra have an agenda or I've never seen hip hop is real you know what I'm saying like they just do interviews they ask you about the battle so to me, I kind of was like, uh, I guess if that's how he feels, that's cool. Because the first question was why he didn't do no interviews after the battle. But he did do one where, like I said, Mr. Check the Temperature. And, and it was so much that he said in it that, you know, you guys should obviously check the interview and things like that. And then, you know, it'll touch on that. But Cassidy, after battling Hitman, has now went to his Instagram and said Hitman Holla is officially retiring after losing to me. Clearly, he'll never be the same, so he decided to never battle again. It is what it is. The Cassidy effect, it's over for the ball. Bars is back. Go gang, let's get to the chicken. Somebody please check on that man. It's not looking good for him. Y'all never seen him like this before. It's all about the science. Saying that he paid, because Hitman said, you know, he was talking about stepping away from battle rap, but he didn't say retiring. He said after his battles, he usually takes some time off to do what he does and things like that. But it sounded like, it sounded like he said he was retiring. And battle rap is an opinionated sport and it's all about perspective. That's why I said in my recaps, you're going to have some folks who feel this way. You're going to have some folks who felt that way. And the thing is... The way Hitman came off in the interview when he was talking about the media and things like that, it almost sounded like LeBron when he was in Miami and lost. Does it bother you that so many people are happy to see you fail? Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, um, all the people that was rooting on me to fail, um, you know, at the end of the day, they got to wake up tomorrow, have the same life that they had. Um, before they woke up today. You guys are going to go back to your regular lives and things like that. And it's like... You know, a lot of people who are doing this have houses, have cars, are living great lives, are making money. So just because someone's not making TV money doesn't mean that they're not living a good life. A lot of fans are living better than battle rappers. Maybe not Hitman Holler, but when it comes to regular battle rappers who do this, a lot of fans are living just as good, if not better. But what I didn't um, understand was, you know, He's breaking his bars down, right? And if you feel like you won, or if there's people who feel like you won, all of that isn't necessary. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only time I see people really go to the, to the furthest extent to try to break their bars down and say this was better than that and that was better than this was when people feel like they've lost. He hasn't done this in no battles that he won. When you, when you clearly won, when you beat Tay Rock, you didn't do this. When you had other battles that you clearly won, you didn't do this. And the thing is, you know, it's no knock on um, the interview, but the interviewer, Mr. Check Temperature, he's from St. Louis. You know, he's, he's only going to go but so far. He asked you great questions, but 
you're not gonna push the line with an artist, and respectfully so, because if you push that line, they won't they'll, they'll, they'll cut the interview short, or they're not gonna want to talk to you, or they're not gonna want to give it to you like super raw. He feels like you won. A lot of people felt like you won. I've been told, you know, you just gotta subscribe to the opinions of the people who you really fuck with. You know what I'm saying? The people who fuck with you, the people who are gonna call it how they call it. A lot of the battle rap fans have him winning. Cassidy, a lot of people have Cassidy winning too. But battle rap is all about perspective. It's about how you feel. Like, okay, I feel like this person got the first, the other person got the second and the third, and then boom, 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 you move on. Next battle, next battle, next battle. Um, he may also did say, if he came back, it would be for Briz Rostin. He would only come back for Briz Rostin. I think that's a dope thing. But the thing, at this point in time, nobody knows what's up. Whether Briz is going to battle again, whether he's not going to battle again. He just turned down. He turned down Mook last year. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody knows when we're going to see something from him. You know what I mean? And, and, and maybe he's comfortable where he's at. If he's comfortable with what he's doing and where he's at, then who knows? We probably may never see him again. But Cassidy now, I told y'all, didn't I say I said this shit? When I did the first recap, I said Cassidy was never changed his energy when there was battles that people feel like he lost, clearly. Like battles that he did not win, he never changed his energy. He stayed the same throughout the whole process. So do you think for a second, now there's a battle where he did better than his other battles and people feel like he won? Do you think that energy is going to change? And like I said, Hitman put himself in this position because he set the bar so high. He said, and I quote, I am going to make it to where he never gets booked again. We didn't say that. We No, no blogger said that. You said that. So when you set the bar high like that, people going to call it like it is. Like you can't, we can't go back. And then when you say, that the people that they don't like me or they got agendas against me, everybody had you winning to go in. Everybody picked you to win. I picked you to win. Most other bloggers, I mean, I don't watch every single channel, but I know for a fact that most people picked you to win going into the battle. So why, if people had a preconceived notion of, uh, about you or was building an agenda against you or a narrative, why would people have you winning going into it? And then when the battle actually happens, and they see it, and they view it for their perspective, and they have the other person win it, that's not a narrative. A narrative is saying, yo, I got this person winning. And regardless of whether he wins, loses, or if I ain't even see the battle whatsoever, I'm going to say that person won because this is how I want the, the, the story to go. That ain't it. I said in my first recap, the one that did over 100,000 views, I said... You, you good whether you feel like one person won, you good whether you feel like the other person won because to me, the first round is the round where they both had the most reactions, the most did they think after that the battle went downhill. They both got booed in the second, they both got booed in the third. So for me, that shit kind of like washes out because both niggas is getting booed. Like, I said there's two types of trash. You got dirty New York sewer trash with the trash juice dripping and rats running through it. And then you got white people trash, suburban trash, trash that could go to the Goodwill. You know what I'm saying? This wasn't the Goodwill trash. The crowd was not the Goodwill trash. It was the New York sewer rats running through it. He was getting booed for the same lines that he bring back and got cheers for. Like, he said this shit himself. I never seen no shit like that before. But now you got Cassidy. He's like, yo, I retired. <laughs> Cassidy's is like, he retired you. Like, I made this nigga retire. That shit is crazy, and he has such a big fan base that, yo, you got to really, like, and, and, and I seen Daylight's blog earlier, nobody's going to beat Cass, like, for real, it, because the thing is, he, he said nobody's going to beat, the nigga got a fan base that's so big that if he even has a debatable battle, or if it's even remotely close, or he does any better than he's in in his last joint, his fans is not letting that shit go down like that. They're going to continue to rile and rave and go crazy. They'll say 3-0 off the gate. 3-0. Niggas who ain't even see the battle. It's like 3-0. I don't give a fuck. 3-0. 3-0 because it's 3-0. You can't compete with them, niggas. How are you going to compete with them? It's virtually impossible. When I drop the recap, I just drop it. I don't even read the comments. It is what it is. You don't get paid the same amount anyway. So it don't even, it's just like you you just argue, you arguing for no reason. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, he's starting to do that too because he really came to the defense of his own material. If your material was that great, 
and you felt like you smoked them, you ain't got to recap. I'm like, the niggas who recap, recap. I never see artists have to break down their own shit if they feel like they won. If a nigga if one, you had win, let me ask y'all that. Have you ever seen Chilla Jones in all of the battles that he had last year? Have you ever seen him say, yo, nah, in my third, I meant this. Or in my first, I meant that. They don't do that shit. They don't do it for a reason. The reason why they're not doing it is because they feel like they won or they feel like they had a competitive battle. The only time I see niggas doing that is when niggas got them losing. I, it is what it is. I'm not saying you won or you lost. At this point, it's irrelevant to me because like I said, the blog's already been made. I watched the battle once. I tried to watch it again. I couldn't get through it. The boos, the boos, the boos, the jeers. It's just not my thing. I'm sure ARP made money off of it. I'm sure you made money off of it. I'm sure there's a lot of battle rappers right now in ARP's inbox like, hey, big homie, I believe, I believe. Can I get a play over there, big homie? I believe. You know how many artists was there from URL? The ones that be like, oh, no, no, I don't fuck with ARP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them niggas was there. And I heard, I heard that their league was not even fucking with that. Like, they were watching the pay-per-view and, and pointing niggas out like, oh, you see your man there? Oh, you see your man there? Oh, you see so-and-so there too? Niggas was not feeling that. But guess what? These battle rappers is like hungry dogs. They gonna go wherever the food is at. Oh, the lights and cameras is over here? Oh, the stage is over here? Oh, they got some joints in there? Oh, it's an event? They coming right through. Hey, big bro, could you let me in? Hey, big homie. Niggas might even be like, yo, bro. Can I get on the next one? I promise you, that's just the way the game goes. But now, Cassidy has the, the divine right to battle whoever he wants, to call out whoever he wants, all because you said, you said that you were going to make it to where he does not get booked anymore, and that did not happen. I have zero, zero reason to hate against Hitman Holler, to be a, have an agenda or anything. I just call it like I call it so I don't spoil it. Cassidy's first round versus your first round, even if people feel like you got the first or got, he got the first, them moments where he said shit like, you said you known for punching niggas, I'm like, where was I? That's mad different than the shit that he had before. You had it in the car, I mean, you read had it in a car, but you had it in your bag. Like, that shit is not the same as the shit that he was spitting versus Goods or versus Arsenal. And now, with you saying what you said, the man feels like he retired you. Wow. Yeah. So, y'all drop in the comments and let me know what y'all think. Uh, once again, salute to Mr. Check the Temperature for getting that interview. You know what I'm saying? That interview was important. It was very, very, very important because nobody heard Hitman's side of the story. They only heard one side, you know, Cash is there with his people. They toasting up, they having drinks, they smoking. They feel like they won, you know what I'm saying, the NBA title or something like that. And uh, now you got his side, you know. He, he's going to feel how he's going to feel and there's nothing wrong with that battle rap. It's all about perspective. That's the word at the end of the day. But... When you set the bar high saying that you're going to make it to where somebody doesn't get booked anymore and they do anything but not get booked anymore, you got what you got. But other than that, man, salute to the subscribers, that notification gang, RiceGangClothing.com, for the merchandise, you heard me right, gang.